I guess. So it's a cold, wet, rainy day. I'm actually home from work today because of the rain. So I do irrigation and we don't work in the rain. So uh, I figured I'd work on my little dredge. This is one of my old drop riffle, double drop riffle sluice boxes I made uh, sometime last year, maybe the year before that, I don't remember. But anyway, I converted it over to a one and a half inch dredge header box. There's a little, it's like a little mini flare jet, I guess. And I got it sitting down in there with uh, liquid nail construction adhesive. It's what I use to seal everything. I haven't painted it yet or waterproofed it or done nothing. All I did was attach the, uh, the piece for the dredge. And then also, while I was working on that, I figured I'd show you my little dredge nozzle I built. This is the uh, one and a half inch dredge nozzle I'm going to be running it with. And this is the jet right here. They say to use a ratio of four to one. So whatever size you're running, if you're running a two inch, you go uh, 0.25 of an inch, or I'm sorry, half an inch. And since this is a one and a half inch, I'm using three eighths as my jet size. Now, I'm not sure that this is going to actually work because it might create too much of a bottleneck there going down from inch and a half to three quarters so we'll see I had more pieces I could have put that would give it more of a pressure coming down nicking down to that range but uh, that's all I used and then I'm using this for my dredge nozzle because this thing necks down about that size for the pipe so I didn't want a rock going in there that was bigger than what, uh, you know, than that size. And see, hold on, here's my two and a half inch suction nozzle that I got from Keen. And I just want to show you how it compares to the one I built. That's how they look side by side. Hold on one second. Here's the one from Keen, and then here's the one I built. And the main reason I built it is because I didn't want to spend a hundred bucks on another dredge nozzle. I'm pretty sure this one's going to work, but if not, I'm only out twenty-something bucks, so not a big deal. But uh, yeah, so there's my two and a half inch next to my little one and a half inch. And then I'm using uh, Tiger Flex hose for all of them. This is the two and a half inch Tiger Flex, and this is the inch and a half. And then this piece goes back to my uh, box over there and is thread in. And everything else I've got, I've been using quick couplers, but uh, for my pump and everything. But I didn't have any. That's the only thing I still have to get. Uh, here's for my pressure hose for my pump and then my foot valve it has quick connects as well and there's my inch and a half pump I'll be using 90 gallons per minute it weighs about 44 pounds uh, and it's a uh, Sportsman 2.8 horsepower. It's one of those Honda knockoffs. There's that motor. It's 90 gallons per minute. Well, I don't suppose you can read that. Oh, let's see if I got my loop here. CW15, UP15, 90 gallons a minute, 17.8 meters, 58 feet. 
So it's not really a high pressure pump, but for a little one inch and a half. Now I'm trying to make this as portable and as lightweight as I can. I think it ought to work for that. And if needed, I got my little one inch pump that's more higher pressure. This thing does about 42 PSI. Uh, Harbor Freight, clear water. So, uh, if this one don't have the pressure for it, I'm sure that little one inch will. And since it's such a small dredge, it doesn't need much. I'll um, give you an idea how wide it is. There's my loop. So it's not very wide. And see this size right here, these, uh, these drop riffles, they prevent any bigger rocks from dropping in there. I mean the biggest size I've got is about, that's a little bit over, that's probably six, uh, a little bit bigger than half an inch right there. And so the big rocks, they ain't going to be able to fall in this and that will protect the fine gold and stuff that sells down in there. There's actually little drops underneath there. Uh, little grooves. Speaking of which, it looks like I left a piece in there from from the last trip. A couple pieces of gold. But uh, anyway, and that's these little spots right here. That's just some epoxy I used my liquid nail to seal up some places that I thought was weak. When I was touching it up, I still got to paint waterproof and everything, but anyway, so that's what I was working on today. Just a quick little dredge combo, uh, dredge, uh, backpackable dredge. And this will be carried in along with that pump and some hoses and stuff. I'll show you guys how it does uh, as soon as the weather clears up. Alright guys. Here's my cart all loaded up for dredge and uh, suction tube and suction hose and everything. Got my little water pump on there. This is my inch and a half. I'm bringing a roll of paper towels, oil, or, uh, gloves for dredging, extra gloves. Camera stand, drinks, gas, a couple buckets for one for clean out, one for the foot valve, some pans, got a shovel, just in case I gotta dig in the foot valve. And there's my little dredge sluice underneath there. And extra panning gloves. Now I'm gonna pull this thing down, test it out. Got it all loaded up, I'm gonna Roll it up here in the back of the pickup. Take it on down to the spot. Guys, so I come down here to the creek to test my pump I got, my inch and a half pump I got from uh, Home Depot. It's supposed to be 90 gallons per minute. Well, in actuality, 
this thing's barely putting out 30. Uh, there's the pump. And originally I was going to be dredging, but obviously they're putting out 30 gallons a minute. That's not working so well as a dredge. So I've had to uh, modify my design somewhat. And instead, I just got the hose going to my sluice box, and then I'm just shoveling in like a high banker. And really, this stretch of creek, I've panned it before. Just right here, this, this little 30 foot curve, I've panned it and not really found nothing. So I really wasn't trying to work it, but uh, this really is one of the only stretches on this creek that's got a deep pool where I can set this pump up. So I figured I'd give it a go and maybe try moving some more material and hopefully be surprised if I found a nice layer of clay or something. But right now it's looking like that's not going to happen. And it's pretty much a wasted trip with the pump anyway. And it worked. I'm using it as the shovel high banker but uh, I really wanted to use it as a dredge so that pump's probably going back to the store and I have to get something that's got a little bit more flow but anyway uh, I'm still going to clean this up and maybe do some more high banking and stuff and just wanted to show you my operation concentrates for the day after uh, the failed dredging and using that as a high banker instead of a dredge I got some fines in there some really fine definitely wasn't a bonanza but uh, that spot that part of the creek has never been good for me for gold I've never found chunky gold there, I've never found big gold there, I've always just found fines. So, looks like that's pretty much what I found today. Not much of it, definitely didn't even pay for gas or nothing, but at least I didn't go all the way to Thermal City and uh, spend all that gas money. So, alright guys, I am back at the house after uh, my other failed pump didn't work as a dredge and also it might have been my nozzle my old nozzle design was different I changed the design and this is the new design um, I got a three-quarter inch pressure line coming in off a of one inch and then it goes down to that three-eighths inch jet and I drilled a hole into a, a 45 there right around the middle of it looking straight down and uh, that's my new setup. Well, it runs it pretty good, even at idle. A little bit above idle, it starts pulling suction. So I'm pretty happy. I uh, haven't had a chance to test it out of the creek yet, but it's working right here at the house, which is what I should have done with that other pump. But uh, I'm surprised. I didn't think this little one inch Pacific Hydra Star would have enough oomph to run the dredge, but evidently it does. Now I'll have a video of it running just here in a second for you. Now I'll go into more detail if anybody wants about how to build this, but uh, how to build this suction nozzle, but it's pretty easy. Uh, it's got a female one inch coupler because I had a male adapter there, a male uh, three quarter, or a male one inch adapter uh, going into a uh, one inch to three fourths bushing, and then some three quarter inch with a 90 another 90 going to a three quarter inch female uh, and then this parts are galvanized as a three quarter inch necking down to three eighths and then a three eighths inch thread right there and what I did was I drilled and tapped uh, using a tap and die this hole and tapped it for three eighths and so I was able to just screw that in and then I uh, put some amazing goop around it to seal it for pressure 
and it just goes into a 90 or a 45 uh, going down to a I glued in a uh, it's just a little piece of pipe and then uh, a female and then the rest is just the cam locks and that runs back to the sluice that's going to be tied into my uh, little dredge sluice basically I just want a little backpacking unit uh, for cleaning out a couple bay rock crevices I know about and uh, also for hiking in and cleaning out some exposed bedrock. It had to be pretty lightweight and portable, so it doesn't really matter how long it lasts. I know it's not going to last like a steel nozzle, obviously, but any use I get out of it's fine. I mean, I'm probably only going to use it once or twice, and then that crack's done, so until I find another one. And all you need to run it uh, is a little one inch Harbor Freight clear water pump. Hey guys, just showing you a quick test of my suction nozzle, my homemade suction nozzle. Uh, it's pulling some nice vacuum for just running the motor at idle. Uh, my little one inch pump. There's a little suction. Vortex being created. And when I throttle it up, it really runs good. 